everybody, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day for a sublimation tutorial. Do you love sublimation but want to make bigger projects without seams or overlaps? I have some helpful tips I'll share while we make some awesome sublimation doormats. Aren't they cute? Let's head on over to the craft table and we'll get started. Now your first step is to find a big design to use for your big sublimation project. I've included some large designs like this one and this one that are ready for you to use, but I'll also show you how to create or customize really large sublimation designs using a free website. Wait till you see how easy it is. Really and truly, you do not have to be an artist to design your own sublimation files. I'll show you just what you need to do. Now the most important skill we'll cover in this tutorial is tiling a design like you see here. That's how we'll print a beautiful file large enough for a doormat on your own sublimation printer. This process will require some free software that works best on a computer, either desktop or laptop, and I will show you how to get it. Now I've tested a few different doormats. Let me show you what they look like before we add anything to them. First, I found a mat online that specifically says it's for sublimation. So I'm curious how it will do. This is the mat that I'll use for the full process today. You can also get these white doormats made just for sublimation. So I was curious how they would work. I think this would work best indoors, don't you think? Next, I have seen tons of crafters try this indoor outdoor mat from Home Depot. The fibers in the middle, this part right here, are polyethylene, so they should take the dye well. It looks similar to one I'm going to demonstrate the full process on, so we'll see how they compare. Now I found this PVC mat with a removable insert. Isn't that cool? And it's made just for sublimation, so this would be great to decorate for each season, wouldn't it? And this classic entryway mat, I'm sure we've all seen ones like this before with the brown fibers. I found one made of polyester. Now I printed all of my designs using an Epson Eco Tank that I converted for sublimation ink um, using Hippo ink. I recommend the 125 gram A sub paper for the most vibrant colors. But if you're doing a full color design like the gnome doormat, you'll find the 105 gram A sub paper does a better job with the seams. Use the paper that works best for your project. When we get to the actual sublimating, we'll also need scissors or a paper trimmer, a measuring tape, a lint roller, heat resistant tape, and a heat press. It's much easier to work on such a large project with a bigger press, especially when you're covering a lot of area. I'm using my 12 by 10 inch Cricut Easy Press, but a Cricut Auto Press or a traditional clamshell heat press would also work well. Now having a steady surface the size of your large item will help during the pressing. If the mat or design moves during the sublimation process, you could get ghosting or blurring. For the easy press, I placed two of the Cricut heat resistant mats, these big ones, right next to each other on a big table. Since the press is mobile, I'll leave the project in place and move the easy press around. But for the auto press or any other type with the pressing area off the table, a piece of thin plywood or heavy cardboard the size of your mat helps you keep everything rigid. I will show you how to use both approaches. Now since we're sublimating, there will be some fumes during the heating process. So I'm working in a well-ventilated area. Um, put out a fan if you need to, and don't get too close to the designs until they cool off and the chemicals dissipate. Remember, safety first. Now let's make some big sublimation projects. Step one, get your sublimation designs. Sublimation printing requires high quality design files for the best results, especially on big projects. If you'd like to use my designs to get started, I have three complete sublimation designs in PNG format perfect for doormats. I've included rectangular and oblong versions to fit the different doormat shapes. A design that says, welcome to our home with a floral border, a cute gnome for the holiday seasonal design, and a pretty wreath that says, welcome to our family home. If you'd like to customize the design, I've also included versions of the floral border and wreath that you can edit. I'll show you how. 
To find these files, go to jennifermaker.com slash 442 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. Then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the designs on the page by searching for design number 442 and then click it to download the zip file. There are lots of ways to work with sublimation designs, but today we'll use Google Drawings to personalize the wreath and Adobe Acrobat Reader to print it. To get a free Google account, visit google.com slash docs slash about. To download the free printing software, go to adobe.com slash acrobat slash pdf dash reader. You can use these steps for anything in the collection or for a totally different sublimation design. Step two, prepare your sublimation design. While sublimation designs can create a full coverage look, I want to keep my design smaller than the full mat. So first measure and record the dimensions for the design area. Mine are 24 by 12 and a half inches in landscape format. Now that we know how big to make the design, let's customize it. Adjusting these designs is easy with the free software, Google Drawings. It's available in the Google account that I mentioned earlier. On your desktop or laptop computer, go to Google Drive in the Google Chrome web browser. Click on New in the top corner, go to More, and select Google Drawings. The next screen has an empty canvas. Let's adjust it to work with the design area that we measured. Click File and select Page Setup. In the dialog box, select Custom and input your design area dimensions. Again, that's 24 by 12 and a half inches, but yours might be different. Then click Apply. Under the Insert menu, select Image and Upload from Computer. Navigate to your file, it's probably in your Downloads folder, and click Open. Here's what my image looks like in Google Drawings. You can move the image anywhere on the page, but centering is easiest to work with. Horizontal and vertical red lines appear when your image is centered. To add your family name, go to the menu and select Text Box. Click and drag covering the area between the leaves and across the page to create a text box. Type in your phrase. I'm going to type in the Maker family. Then select it so you can change the font and size. In the toolbar, look for the font box. It probably says Arial right now. You can use any of the typefaces listed or select more fonts to browse Google's collection. These are all free to use. I'll search for style script, select it, and then click OK. That's still really small, so use the font size menu to increase the size until it fits better. 200 works well for my phrase and script, but you may want yours bigger or smaller. You can also center the text by clicking the Align option. The four little lines in the top toolbar, and then pick Center, the second option from the left. Position the text to your liking. Save your work to your computer once you're happy. To do this, just go to the File menu, click Download, and select PDF. Step 3. Print your sublimation design. Open the design that you just saved as a PDF in Adobe Acrobat Reader. Make sure it looks right before you keep going. Select the file menu and click Print. Then under Page Sizing and Handling, select Poster, which will tile the whole design across 8.5 by 11 inch sections so you can print them on your sublimation printer. Set the overlap to 0.2 so you will have some overlapping design elements where the pages meet. Also, check the Cut Marks box. I'll show you how those things help later. Under Orientation, make sure Landscape is selected. This project will take between 4 and 8 sheets, depending on the text, but mine takes 4. Next, click the Printer button in the lower left corner to set up for sublimation printing. Under Layout, make sure Flip Horizontally is checked so the design will print mirrored, always important. If you're on a Mac as I am, you can click Color Matching and click Color Sync and select your ICC profile. 
If you're on a Windows computer, choose your ICC profile as you normally would. Lastly, for print settings, select presentation paper matte and high quality. Make sure you have sublimation paper loaded correctly into your printer and click print. If you're new to sublimation printing or feeling confused about all this mention of sublimation printers, paper, ink, and ICC profiles, be sure to check out my Sublimation for Beginners guide at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation for beginners. Step four, prepare your print for sublimation. Lay out the pages face up to make sure they're all printed correctly. Remember the design will be mirrored. If we start with the upper left page tile, we're going to mentally number our pages one through four going clockwise. Notice the cut marks on each one. Yours might look a bit different, but they do indicate where the design ends. We are going to trim some of the edges between the cut marks so we can overlap the tiles without seams. Watch what I do and apply it to your design. I want the edges of panel one to be on top of where it matches with two and four, so I need to remove the extra blank paper. Take panel one and use the cut marks to line up your paper cutter on the short side to the right. Then trim the paper. After you cut, make sure there is no white paper edge next to any printed design parts since that will create a gap in the transfer. Cut any excess you see, trim along the bottom edge too. On panel two, trim just the bottom long edge since that will go on top of where it meets panel three. Trim just the short right edge of panel four and leave panel three alone so its edges can go under two and four. If you have more panels than I do, use the same approach so your edges will overlap without the design having any gaps. Now to put them together with heat resistant tape. Place panel one's short edge on top of panel two's, lining up the designs. If there's any white paper showing between sections of ink, that will create a blank spot on the mat. So overlapping designs edges a little bit is better than not getting them close enough. And make sure there aren't any wrinkles on your seams as they can create blank patches or even warp your result. This design is pretty forgiving since there's lots of white space. But if you're making a fuller coverage project like my gnomes, make sure you trim off any of the white edges that could interfere with the flow of colors. That happened in one of my tests and the gap is noticeable. Secure them with heat resistant tape when they look good. This takes some patience, so take your time. Do the same for panels three and four by overlapping four on three's short edge. Next, tape the top section's edge on top of the bottom. Again, use patience when lining everything up. Be careful not to tape over any sublimation ink. If you have a full coverage design, you can add small amounts of tape to the back to keep it together without shifting. But be aware that it adds another layer and sometimes that tape can leave an impression mark. So avoid it if possible or use just a little bit of tape. Try to tape in non-ink areas only if possible. Evenly trim the excess paper to make it easier to position and get rid of the cut marks. We don't want to sublimate those. Step five, press your sublimation print. This project is so big, we'll need to press it in sections. Even the big Cricut Auto Press will need to press it in sections. But it's important that you keep the project stable and flat at all times. If you're using a Cricut Easy Press to press your project, you have an advantage here because you can move the press around your design while keeping it flat on your work surface. So if you use the auto press or a traditional clamshell heat press, you need to be cautious about moving a floppy mat and design as the sublimation might blur. To avoid this problem, I found a thick piece of cardboard to keep everything flat, but thin plywood would also work. The mat will be between it and the heat, so don't worry, it's safe. Since we're heating up rubber and sublimation dye, open a window or set up a fan to improve your ventilation. You don't want to breathe in the fumes of either.
Now let me first show you the Cricut Easy Press method. Heat your Easy Press to 390 degrees Fahrenheit. I put two large Cricut heat resistant mats right next to each other to create a safe surface larger than my mat. Place your doormat face up on the mats. Lint roll the doormat to remove any dust or debris. Preheat the doormat in sections to remove any moisture. This is good practice for the actual sublimation process. Use a measuring tape to find the top center of your doormat and place the design face down so the taped seam lines up with the mark. Then find the center of one short side of the mat and adjust the print so its horizontal seam also matches. With larger projects, use more tape than normal to keep everything as still as possible. Once your design is secure, cover the entire project with white butcher paper. We'll press the design just like how we tiled it in sections. Starting with the top left corner, place your Cricut Easy Press on the top of the design for 70 seconds. There's no need to press hard, just the weight of the Easy Press is enough. When the timer goes off, lift the heat press straight up without shifting the paper and place it back down on the top right corner. Press for another 70 seconds. Repeat for the lower right corner and then the lower left corner. It's okay if some areas get a little overlapping pressure. After the four corners are done, place the easy press in the top center of the doormat and press for 70 seconds. And finally, press the lower center section. You will have pressed the mat six times in total, possibly more or less if you're making a bigger or smaller project than me. Remove the butcher paper and let the design cool before removing the tape and paper. It's still sublimating if it's really hot. Now let me show you the Cricut Auto Press method. The process is similar with an auto press or a traditional clamshell heat press, but instead of moving the press, that would be really hard after all, we'll move the project. So heat your press to 390 degrees Fahrenheit. Prepare the mat and design like last time, but place it on a big piece of cardboard or plywood that you found. Remember to use plenty of heat resistant tape. Place a clean sheet of butcher paper over the whole design. Again, we'll need to press the doormat in sections. It's a little tricky, but you can do it. Starting at the top left of the design, position the doormat on the press base, trying to get as much of the design as you can under the heating element. You might want to feel underneath the press base with one hand while keeping the other hand on the design to get a feel of where your design is positioned. Press the first section for 70 seconds at 390 degrees Fahrenheit. When the first area is completed, let it cool for a few seconds, then shift the project to the left enough that the heating element will mostly cover new area. It's okay to reheat a bit of overlap so you don't miss pressing any of the design. As long as the design doesn't shift, pressing the overlapping seams more than once doesn't significantly hurt your results. Press the new section for 70 seconds. Keep shifting and pressing until the entire design has been sublimated. Let it sit a few seconds while the last section cools a bit, then remove the paper, tape, and your used design. You did it! Okay, how about some other doormats? I mentioned that I did some extra testing for you, so let's go over the details for the other doormats. I prepared my designs the same way for each one, making sure they were sized correctly for each. First, the white sublimation doormat. This mat is made specifically for sublimation, so I was really curious how it would work. Heat your press to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Clean the mat with a lint roller and then preheat it for 10 seconds. Secure your sublimation print face down with heat resistant tape and press each section for 35 seconds. How about the rubber backed doormat? These indoor-outdoor mats are the ones that you can pick up from home improvement stores like Home Depot. Mine looked very similar to a sublimation-specific mat. The only difference was the weave. Really. 
so heat your press to 390 degrees Fahrenheit. Clean the mat with a lint roller and then preheat it for 10 seconds. Secure your print with heat resistant tape and press each section for 70 seconds. Another option is this cute doormat that comes with changeable blanks that have a sublimation friendly coating on top. Since the inserts are oblong, I use that version of the flower border design file to show you how it looks. So heat your press to 380 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure the blank is face up, then clean it with a lint roller and preheat it for 10 seconds. Secure your print with heat resistant tape and press each section for 70 seconds. I also tried a polyester entryway doormat, which is a good opportunity to work with a darker item. Remember, sublimation ink is transparent, so your design might look different on this one. Heat your press to 380 degrees Fahrenheit. Use a lint roller to remove any debris and preheat the mat for 10 seconds to remove any moisture. Secure your print with heat resistant tape and press each section for 70 seconds. So what do you think? Sublimating on big projects is totally doable now that you've seen how it's done, right? Yes, totally. Now, as I mentioned, you can use these same steps with other sublimation designs. Since they're often made using high quality files, you can try enlarging your designs and tiling them for big projects like this. This technique works for lots of things. If you're picking from the designs that I'm sharing, the wreath and the flower designs behind me are the easiest to get consistent results with because they, aren't, they don't have big sections of color like the cute gnomes have. If you have your heart set on the gnomes, they work best with the simple white sublimation mat, like this one. Definitely practice tiling and taping your designs together before tackling a full coverage design like this one. Make sure there's no white paper showing at your seams. That's really important for this. Now, you might be curious which of these doormats work the best. I was really surprised after all of my testing. My least favorite mats are the ones with the interchangeable inserts and the two with the woven material in the central box shape like these here. Yes, even though two of these are sublimation specific and the third is from Home Depot, the one that everyone is using. I'm not sure if it's the texture of the mat, but I had trouble getting a really consistent transfer. Several tests had little patches that didn't um, sublimate no matter how careful I was. Now it is possible with really careful placement and pressing, that's why I demonstrated my process on one for you. But if you're just starting out or you're using a smaller press, hold off on these until you're really confident working with big items. My middle choice is actually the classic brown doorway mat. I really wasn't sure how this would go since it's definitely not a smooth surface. It's kind of like a shag carpet in fact, <laughs> but I was pleasantly surprised by how it turned out. It was easy to work with and it really took the dye very well. However, since the fibers are brown and sublimation dye is transparent, your designs will look darker than they are on your screen after you're done sublimating. If you're decorating a mat that will go outdoors or get heavy traffic, this is definitely my recommendation, especially if it's a darker design. I think it will hold up really, really well. My favorite is the white sublimation mat. The squishy texture allows the press to really hold the transfer tight to the surface, so it's much easier to get a consistent result. And since it's white, the colors come through true to your design and they're very crisp, wouldn't you say? If you have a very light design or need the colors to look like the print, this I think is the best option. Like I mentioned, this is my pick for fuller coverage projects like the gnomes too. The squishy fuzzy texture is more forgiving than the others, even if you do have a bit of white paper showing at your seams. <laughs> The mat itself isn't quite as durable, however, so that's worth considering. I think these would work best for indoor, lower traffic spots. Think bathrooms, kitchens, bedrooms, that kind of thing. Or as seasonal decorations that you don't keep out all year. They're inexpensive, so you can make several designs to swap throughout the year and spread out the wear. 
Speaking of wear, we're going to put these mats around our studio inside and outside and use them for a while to report on how they do. I will keep you updated on the project's blog post over at jennifermaker.com slash how to sublimate large designs. If you need help getting set up for sublimation, be sure to check out my sublimation startup mini course over at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation startup. I walk you through choosing and setting up your printer with the right ink, show you in more detail all of the tools that you can use, and the variety of things that you can sublimate onto, even things you might not have thought you could do. And then I show you how to use software to print and press beautiful projects. You can sign up right now and learn at your own pace. That's at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation startup. I also have a group just for sublimation crafting where you can get help and tips from other crafters who love to sublimate too. Come join us at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation group to ask questions, share ideas, and get inspired. It is an amazing group. And please feel free to ask any questions about supplementing be below this video too. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. <music>